Okay, so in this video, I'm going to ha uh, try and have a controlled experiment. Um, what I like to do is test the Stan Myers Exciter Array using tap water, document the results on a piece of paper, and then I'm going to clean out the tap water and fill it with distilled water, perform the same exact test with the same parameters, and document that. Once we have that document, then we can compare notes. Uh, what I'm going to show you is, that's what we have here. I have tap water. We got a column for amperage, for voltage, temperature, and this will be the uh, result, which will be the VAs or the watts. Um, I'm going to use a single cell test, cells in series, and parallel cells document that accordingly in the tap water section. Now once I'm done with the tap water section, we'll go to the distilled water section and then perform the same test on this column here. So I'm going to start. So here we go. We got the main power on, turn the 9XB card. So first of all we got we have it's about two and a half, two and a half amps at 3.4 volts. So, go here. So it's 2.5 amps and the voltage, I forget already. The voltage was 3.5. Five, just called it. Okay. Three point five. Now this is a parallel connection. Okay. Now I'm going to do a single cell test. Now you can see. I don't know if you can see the production there. The lighting is pretty poor. Uh, it's only like three cells hooked up in parallel inside of there. Anyways, so now I'm going to go. Just shut this off real quick. We're gonna do a single cell test. So now I have it hooked up to one single cell. Turn 9XB back on again. We have, looks like two amps. Show voltage, okay. So single cell. 2.0 and our voltage again is 4.4 right fluctuates a little bit up and down that's because of the pulses so 4.4 okay now we got to hook it up in series so turn this off we're going to connect this in series so one end, we'll go to this cell, like so, and get it right, uh, it doesn't want to clip. And I'll get a jumper wire, if I can get it, it is right here. Okay, so now I have it connected in series. One cell in here and one cell in there. And you can see the one cell somewhere in there. Now, I left all the parameters the same. I haven't increased the variac. Uh, the amper should go down. There it is. So it's, uh, it looks like under, it looks like half an amp at 7.3 volts. Okay, so half an amp at 7.3. All right, so let's check temperature. Eighty nine degrees. Now, granted, um, this is a non invasive test, it's the best I got for now. It's actually hmm, 
my ambient temperature seems to be a little higher probably because where I'm at located but anyways there's the temperature let's call it 89 degrees ambient all right so I will stop this test clean out these cells and come back for the next test so this is round two I just finished uh, replacing the water the tap water and we're looking at uh, distilled water right now it's a lot clearer here are the tanks I actually used two gallons of this stuff okay so I'm going to go ahead and turn the 9xb card and we're going to perform the same measurements we did earlier so right now we have this connected in uh, let's see here so I have a couple of cells it's taking a little bit longer to fracture but there it goes it's fracturing it's about three cells multi-cell connection the amp draw the amp draw is okay that's interesting it's uh, very low it's under half an amp hmm okay so I'll write that down so distilled water I got parallel cells I'm gonna put 0.4 check that out again Yep, it's about 0.4 voltage. Oh, little things about getting up here. All right, let's see the voltage. I got my backup tester here. 4.7 volts. Now, let's see, we're going to turn this off, shut this off real quick, now we're going to do a single test, or single cell, so we're going to get the multi-cell that's there and just connect one cell to it, so we're going to have one cell connected. Turn this back on. Manix BX back on. And it's starting, it looks like it's starting to charge and fracture, and there it is. Now we are at, once again, this is like, unfortunately, it's analog, so I kind of have to eyeball it. This is under a half an amp. I'm going to call this, I'm going to call that 0.25. Now it's a single cell, so it's 0.25. And the voltage is 4.9 again. Okay, so now, and there it is, it's only one in the middle, it's working, it's only a single cell. Okay, so now, once again, turn that off. Going to connect this in series. So the way we connect them in series, I go to this cell. This little clip. And we get a jumper to go from cell number one to cell number two. So we're back. So basically these two are connected in series. There's only one cell here and one cell in the middle. So I'm going to turn this on. Right. It's 
just let it charge up. It's doing its thing. I have the frequency on the generator. I left it exactly the same as the other test. Nothing is happening in that cell. Only this cell. Interesting, once again. One cell is not pr producing. The other cell is producing. Once again, this is purely distilled water. Got it connected in series. Now the amperage on this, it's... Okay, this is below. It's almost marking zero. I don't know if I'm suffering from parallax here, but it looks like it's right about... I don't know, let's call this point 0.15. And the voltage, uh, voltage dropped a little bit. It's 4.1. There it is. It's almost reading zero, analog. And Connected in series, only one is provided. Okay, so I'm going to go to the drawing board, uh, add up the math, and see what we got. Well, my friends, I'm happy to show you the results. As you can see, we have the two sections here. Got the tap water section and the distilled water section. Now, all of the parameters were kept the same, meaning I kept the same voltages, I kept the same uh, frequency on the generator. Everything was exactly the same. The only difference was that I went from tap water to distilled water. Now, granted, these numbers are not perfect, but they're accurate enough to show me something very important that I'd like to uh, share with you guys, and it's the following. In the first test we did here in the single cell, we are consuming 8.8 .8 watts. Now, the same exact cell using distilled water, look at that difference, 1.225. Now that's seven time difference. That's significant. Granted, the production of the uh, fracturing of the water was less. We can, it's a visual uh, test that we did. You can see it in the video. It's less production using the distilled water for the same amount of uh, parameters or the same uh, uh, voltages and uh, that we put in there and the frequency. But that does not discourage me. And I'll tell you why. Distilled water is acting as a, res uh, as a limit to current, is limiting current. It's acting as a resistor. And that's what we want. The tap water has contaminants. Uh, apparently our utility companies, they use um, anywhere from chlorine to fluoride to all sorts of other chemicals that they put in there. Those chemicals within the internal or the inside of the exciter array cause a parallel path. That causes current to rise. For example, look at this number right here. We got a 2.0 on the tap water, same cell, Distilled, we got 0.25. Now that's a big, significant um, drop in current consumption. That's what we want because a capacitor is supposed to be um, a dielectric, or the, the the stuff that goes inside a capacitor. A perfect capacitor will not leak anything at all. Now, I don't think there's such a thing as a perfect capacitor, but we want to get something near that. And it looks like the distilled water is doing that job. So, if we can manage uh, to tap into the dielectric property of the distilled water, meaning, as Stein Myers would say, we, we find now a circuit that is in resonance as far as the frequency is concerned 
with the charging and discharging of that fuel cell. Now we can go ahead and charge this capacitor up to the point where the water itself is limiting the current as we can see here but it's allowing the voltage to rise and according to Stan Myers this should fracture the water using electrostatic potential instead of electromagnetic current. Now that's a different method of fracturing the water. So definitely have a lot of more experiments to follow. I'm eager to st get started if you guys have any suggestions on uh, what kind of experiments I should uh, continue doing uh, from now on or any questions, please post below. Thank you.